package includes the LRT, a charger, and the user manual. Read the user manual's warnings and instructions. This is a dangerous device and must be treated with respect. To get started, remove the thumb screw holding the lid on. Remove the lid and take out the battery. Remove the charger from its packaging. Connect the power cord to the charger. Plug the charger into the wall in a fireproof location as lithium polymer batteries may burst, release a large amount of heat and smoke, or even catch fire if a malfunction occurs. Plug the battery balance connector into the charger, aligning the raised ridges of the connector with the port on the charger. The charger should display all three LEDs solid red during charging. This may take about two hours. When complete, all three LEDs should be solid green. If the charger is flashing red or only one or two LEDs turn green, there's likely a problem with the battery. Unplug the battery from the charger, using care not to pull on or damage the small wires as it can lead to a dangerous short. Ensure the power switch is off and plug the main connector of the battery to the one inside the flamethrower. Position the battery so the wires don't get pinched when reinstalling the lid. Reinstall the lid and thumb screw. Place the flamethrower on a grounded surface to minimize static electricity buildup during fueling. Unscrew the fuel cap by rotating it counterclockwise. Pour fuel in using a funnel to help prevent spills. Use gasoline or a gas diesel mixture with up to 50% diesel. Reinstall the fuel cap. Move to the location you plan to use the flamethrower and ensure it is aimed in a safe direction. Turn on the power switch. The voltage gauge should illuminate and indicate the battery voltage. When the battery gets too low, the system will prevent the trigger button from working until you replace the battery with a charged one. Flip up the safety cover on the rear handle and press the trigger button to send a blast of fire. Don't aim higher than 45 degrees or use in excessively windy conditions as fuel and flames may drip toward the operator. When finished, blow out any remaining flame at the nozzle. Turn off the power and flip down the safety cover. Disconnect the battery when not using, and if possible, keep the battery in a separate fireproof location, such as a metal ammo box. This type of battery should be stored with its charge between 11.1 and 11.3 volts for maximum lifespan. Keep the fuel tank three quarters full or less to allow for expansion. Side note, carbon buildup is conductive, so keep those electrodes clean.